Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about the case statement in Pug. So essentially the case statement is just like the normal JavaScript switch statement. So you're able to do different things based on the value um, of a variable or some sort of expression. So in this case here with Pug, it's going to be you're able to change some HTML based on um, some sort of comparison. So let's see how this thing works. I've got a simple HTML um, markup here with the HTML tag, head and body and a title inside the index HTML. We get that result right there. So now inside the body, we're going to use a case statement. So we can start by defining a new JavaScript constant and call this one order status. Okay. Now this right here will be the status of some sort of order. So for example, the order status might be pending. Okay. And this status might be things such as, um, such as pending. It could be in transit. So I'll just write these down. We have pending. It can be in transit and it can also be completed. So we're going to look at these, um, these, these values here and then output different HTML based on what value the order status is. So below here, we're going to use the case statement. It looks like this. You write out case followed by the, um, the thing to actually compare against. In this case here, we're going to compare against order status. Okay. And then you put a um, line break, then a tab, and now you write out something like this. You say when. So using the when keyword, you then write out um, an actual value here. For example, pending. Okay. So it's kind of like English here. We're saying, okay, we're checking the order status. When it is pending, we want to do stuff here. Okay. So let's say, for example, we'll, output a, um, we'll do a paragraph tag and say, your order has been placed and will be sent shortly. Okay, we can do another one for the in transit value. Okay, this one here is going to be your order is on the move. You should receive it soon. Okay, and then one more just for the completed value. All right, paragraph will say your order your order has been completed. Okay, so now we have the case statement all done. So it's going to check the value of order status and then do different things based on the actual value. So now inside the outputted HTML, what do we get? We get your order has been placed and will be sent shortly. That's because currently the order status is equal to pending. If I change this to in transit and then save this, we now get on the move, you should receive it soon. And then obviously if we change it to completed, we get your order has been completed. So you can see how it's actually working here. All right now, what if I make the value here something random, such as random, okay? Random isn't in this list and it's not being compared down here. So what happens now? Well, if I save this, we get nothing. So we actually get no output from that case statement. To actually resolve this, we can use the default keyword. And default means what happens when the value is not one of these. Okay, so if it's not pending, not in transit and not completed, we're going to do this instead. Okay, in that case, we'll just write out something like, Sorry, we aren't sure what happens with your order. Okay. So now if we say this one, sure enough, we get that message right there. All right. And the same thing works with numbers. Just make this, you know, one, two, and then so on. Have this as two. And we should get that one right there. You see how it works. So numbers, strings, whatever you want, it works. And that's how you can use the case statement in Pug. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.